Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sustainability Talks with Lina Pelle and NNN. I'm Nicolo from NNN, and here we have Nicolo. And I'm Nico, Nicola with yeah. one C. So today we are here to talk about sustainability and what Lina Pelle is doing and uh, UNICH, the, um, mm -hmm. the union of the Italian tannery out of Italy they are doing on regarding sustainability. I'm going to introduce you guys Luca Boltri, that is the managing director of Linea Pelle, and he's going to walk us through and uh, welcome us. Thank you, thank you, Nicolò. Uh, hello to everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm uh, going to read a very short uh, uh, introductory speech uh, made by Fulvia Bacchi that unfortunately um cannot join us right now from the beginning of the webinar because of uh, a, a, an emergency um so i i proceed uh, and fulvia uh, uh, say sorry about this uh, uh, sudden absence um we are, we are happy to welcome you to this webinar which is the first of a series of seven web webinars under the name sustainability talks organized by Lina Pelle in collaboration with UNICH, the Italian Tanners Association, uh, that for the last 18 years has published a sustainability report, which proves the commitment and the progress of Italian companies in the field of circularity and sustainability. Since Lina Pelle New York and Lina Pelle London will not take place as usual uh, this January, due to the, uh, unfortunately, due to the ongoing global health emergency, <laughs> We thought we could engage visitors of our fairs in a series of informative webinars in order to explore and learn more about Italian leather and Italian leather sustainability in particular. Through these webinars, we aim to communicate the true value of our leathers and natural and renewable material for the fashion, the automotive and the furniture industries. The topics addressed will be transparency, traceability, circularity, safety, social accountability, and certifications. These topics could not be more relevant as we have entered a new era where sustainability will be impossible to separate from responsibility of companies and individuals in the future. Italian leather derives from a production process that from decades has been characterized by a deep and transparent sustainable missions. We're talking about facts, not words. We hope you will enjoy and appreciate this new initiative by Lina Pelle. And I now leave the floor to Sustainability Talks with Nico and Nico, NNN, who will moderate with great pleasure these events. Thank you, Nico. So, so guys, good morning, everyone, once again. So just a brief introduction of me and Nicolo, NNN. So we are two um, fashion uh, we work both of in fashion in different companies, but we are here as our uh, sustainability talks with NNN. That is our um, YouTube channel that we have opened just to speak about sustainability in fashion. So our aim in our YouTube channel is to bring to the panel the most important uh, the most important CEOs and uh, people that works in fashion and in sustainability. We are here today to, to moderate and ask questions from a uh, brand, from brand and consumer point of view, from a designer point of view to our uh, panelists. And uh, that's it. I'm going to go now with Maritza Conto. I'm going to introduce you Maritza Conto. She worked for Linea Pelle since, two, since 2003, and she is a market analyst and uh, she works in sustainability. And then, and then we also have with us Fabiana Orlandi, that is the expert of sustainability for uh, UNICH. So she is the one that uh, managed the UNICH uh, sustainability report every year. So that's very fundamental role for UNICH and for the call of today, what we are going to uh, talk today. And she is very passionate about, about a circular economy and CSR that also tell us what uh, input, good input she can give us in this, uh, in this field. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi, Fabiana. We want to also introduce Fabio Iraldo. And Fabio, it's our main guest. Hi, Fabio, how are you? 
So Fabio is a professor at Santana University in Italy and also at Bocconi University on sustainability management. It's one of the leading professor out of Italy in sustainability and uh, we, will, we will welcome him today. And actually we start with Fabio, our first question today. Uh, with our special guest and we wanted to ask you Fabio what is uh, for you sustainability and how do you approach uh, sustainability in your studies with your uh, students hello everyone thank you thank you for inviting me it's, it's nice to be here with you uh, yeah sustainability is a pretty complex concept actually and uh, it's difficult to explain it in, in, in very simple words, especially if you have uh, students in front of you, they don't know exactly, how, they know something about sustainability, they know some aspects, but they don't, they're not able to grasp the whole concept. So I use a metaphor, and the metaphor is that the sustainability can be seen as a, a sort of kaleidoscope of colors, you know? all different colors, uh, represent the all different aspects of sustainability. Sustainability is everything, is environment, is social aspects, is ethical behavior, is safety, is anything that improves the quality of life. And as, as, a, as a, a, a table of colors, as a rainbow, uh, you might have, a, you might have a, a favorite color. Every one of us has a, has a favorite color. So many companies, they fall in love with one aspect of sustainability. Uh, they care about the environment particularly or they care about gender equality and so on uh, which is good i mean uh, since every one of us has a favorite color you're absolutely uh, it's legitimate that you pursue objective in one of these aspects but you cannot forget others uh, you cannot paint with all the colors so you are not really sustainable if you don't take into consideration all the colors together you don't neglect you don't have to neglect any color because uh, stakeholders, you know, uh, they are, uh, you, you always find the stakeholders who cares about one particular aspect and a company cannot be too weak, cannot be good in one thing and bad in others. And also, last thing I want to say, you know, mixing different colors, sometimes a new color comes up. And that's what happened with the sustainability. Now you have a table of color, you, you mix them up, and sometimes, you know, you put together the environment and, and climate change, but also uh, the, the, the ability to, uh, way, to recover waste. And then you have the circular economy, which helps climate change and so on. So it's a living creature that evolves uh, by mixing all the colors. So that's, that's why it is important not to forget any, any of the color, which is making up the whole picture of sustainability. Well, this is a great definition. Thank you very much, uh, Fabio. We never had uh, a description like this of sustainability. It's very colorful and uh, it's clear uh, definition. Thanks a lot, really good, uh, insightful. Yeah, we never had something like that. It was very nice. Maurizia, now we can start with our uh, presentation, correct? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um... I will start. Uh, I will start from uh, the, the the very colorful uh, picture that uh, Professor Iraldo gave to us, and uh, after having uh, you know referred to a general uh, definition of sustainability that was very very well expressed with the, with, with this concept of, of a wide uh, picture of uh, of uh, many aspects of sustainability in concrete terms. Uh, as tanning industry, um, we have uh, uh, we have decided to adopt the approach of the United Nations Agenda 2030, that defined an action program to protect the environment, to guarantee the well-being of people, and in general terms, to implement a model of responsible production and consumption. This agenda is composed by 17 objectives that are very wide. As you can see, we have zero poverty, no zero hunger, health and well-being, um, decent work and economic growth, responsible consumption and production. These are very important objectives that define a very wide and complete idea of sustainability. Um, then in, in defining our approach as an industry, we try to compare our efforts as an industry 
towards sustainability with this very important action plan. And we found that the Italian tanning industry acts concretely already on 12 of those objectives. So uh, we, have, uh, we have actually a, an impact, a, a direct impact that can be both positive and negative on 12 out of 17 objectives. And this defines our idea of sustainability. Here um, in this slide, you can, uh, you can find these four main messages. These are our four main areas in which our messages uh, in terms of sustainability are organized. And these are also the four uh, sections that compose our sustainability report uh, of, this, uh, of this year. As, uh, uh, as Luca already said in his introduction, uh, the sustainability report of Italian tanning industry has come to its 18th edition. So it's been really a long time that we collect uh, uh, data, uh, performance indicators, initiatives and projects in the main field that compose our idea of sustainability. Um, these four sections are um, guided through uh, the discovery of the, the, the specific uh, sustainability development uh, goal that, that refer to this section. Um, here you can find uh, the, the same distribution of our 12 uh, SDGs in the map of the supply chain of leather industry. As you can see, all the objectives are distributed in the different uh, areas of the supply chain. You have the tannery with all the objectives that I have already mentioned, but you also have important objectives in every step of the supply chain. Um, it is worth noting that one of those objectives, this number 17, is present in every area. This is because this a uh, very important objective, uh, the partnership for sustainability tells us a very important message. You cannot be sustainable alone. Sustainability is uh, a joint effort uh, that, can, that, that is developed uh, across all the, all the steps of the supply chain and by every actor of, uh, of the industry. Um, and Maurizia, is this, uh, yeah. so it doesn't mean that you already uh, set it up the step for the uh, 2030 agenda? Well, uh, we are uh, working along this, uh, this path to, uh, to uh, reach, let's say, the, this objective. And we are measuring every, every year. Uh, we started to, to, uh, to face this new, uh, to, to have this new approach uh, uh, related to the sustainable development goals uh, since the last year. So uh, it's been the second year that we, uh, that we measured our impact, impact uh, uh, with this approach. So we are kind of every, every, every time we are developing more and more our, our goals and our, and our step forward to, to, uh, to this agenda, to work along this agenda. And uh, just to add, Maurizio, you know, can we say there is, of course, there is, this is a change. It may create some impact, economic impact. Uh, uh, on the business. So is there something you already took in consideration? Yeah. Well, this is, uh, um, of course, uh, being sustainable. Uh, uh, to be sustainable, you need to make uh, uh, investments. You need to change your mind. You need to change sometimes your, uh, your way to approach uh, the production process. And uh, we have made, uh, well, my, my work is with numbers. So we have made an estimate that uh, this effort for Italian tanning industry is about 4% of turnover of the industry. So it is quite a considerable investment um, towards an objective that we, we think it's, it's a top priority of the industry. But it is, well, um, it is important also to consider uh, that uh, we had, it has a very important economic impact on, uh, on the companies. Maurizia, can I ask you a quick question? So uh, we have uh, around 200 people listening to us and I would like to know, you know, m most of us, most of them probably, they don't know what are the SDG and who set up the SDG. So can you give us a little bit of more information regarding SDGs? So uh, as I said, they are 17 objectives, very wide and very comprehensive. Um, that tackle all the different aspects of sustainability. They have been set by the United Nations 
that had defined this agenda for 2030 to reach these objectives. And uh, as I said, uh, they start from, for example, zero poverty, zero hunger, hunger, reducing the poverty in the world, reducing hunger in the world, but also um, having actions uh, in terms of climate change, um, uh, water, qu quality of water, quality of, uh, in, uh, quality of uh, um, studies and, and, um, and uh, quality of work, decent economic uh, condition uh, for workers, uh, um, responsible production and consumption. So uh, they touch we... every aspect of our life, let's say, and they, uh, they are divided in sub-objectives that are 179. So. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's really a complicated uh, agenda uh, to, to analyze. But anyway, I think that uh, trying to, uh, to, to see this aspect and to, to, um, to embrace them in our, uh, in our work, in our life, we can really make the difference. Uh, uh, we can really make our, our, our part in, uh, in reaching uh, the, the sustainability objectives. Thank you. Thank you for giving us this hint because sometimes you know we need to be specific. We yeah, we don't yeah, know yeah. what the SDG means. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. So as you can see here, we have selected two SDGs for the first section of our sustainability report. The first section takes into consideration the material, leather. Leather is a unique and natural material. And uh, well, here you can find some numbers. Leather is 100% renewable, renewable material because it comes from a natural resource. We, know, we all know 100% biological. And for about 100%, it is a byproduct of another industry. So uh, these are not just numbers. These are the, 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 very, uh, the very fundamental identity of, of our material. And as we are really convinced uh, of the value of our material, um, we, really, we really want to promote uh, uh, information about our material and, really, and we really want to support an idea of transparency and correct information. Um, we, we really want to communicate to the market that leather has extraordinary properties that are strictly connected to this natural origin. So, that are strictly connected to these numbers that you that you see here, and uh, for do, for, to do that, we also launched a campaign to communicate the real value of leather to uh, to make uh, you know this material uh, more and more appealing, more and more appealing. We know that leather already has a, a, a prestige image. A luxury image, a, a quality image, but we want to transfer this image also to, to new generations, for instance, and we want uh, above all to promote the transparency in the sustainability claims, because as Professor Iraldo said, we have different colors in sustainability. We don't want to focus only on one. For example, yeah. we don't want to focus only on green, but we want to focus only also on other colors. Can I ask you a quick question? What do you mean with 100% renewable? We mean that it comes from, uh, completely comes from a, a, a natural resource that is not going to exhaust. That is, yeah. it, it is. So a, it come, yeah, you are counting as renewable everything that comes from an animal source. Exactly, exactly. It. As it comes from an, an animal, an animal, it's, it has an animal origin, it is 100% renewable. And when, and when you account 99.5%, what does it mean exactly? This means, well, this is the percentage of leather coming from animals that are, uh, that are slaughtered for food, for food uh, needs of the, of the human beings. So uh, we, as an industry, we uh, process a byproduct of the food industries. We recover a strap of another industry to transform them in a valuable material such as leather. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, just to add that 0.5%, I think everybody will question like, what is that? What is that? This 0.5% is what we call in, our, in, the, in, in, in the industry, uh, it, is, uh, it is the animal origin for leather, which is not bovine, 
sheep or goats, but it is the exotic typology of leather, which is composed by a high variety of, of animal species that come from the reptile to the ostrich of, of, of other, other, other typologies, but they are uh, uh, not uh, directly connected, let's say, to the food industry, let's say. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we will have a specific yes. webinar on this topic. Yes, yes. That I we see will... is already as a hot topic. Yeah, it is a hot topic. We have, uh, well, uh, in terms uh, of numbers, as, uh, as this slide shows, uh, we only have a very small percentage of our production that is concentrated in this. This is a very small niche of production, but as it is a, a high added value, uh, high added value niche, very important for some of our main target sector. Um, in, in the program of the sustainability talks, there will be a specific, uh, a specific talk that you will have the pleasure to moderate. <laughs> Well, and also uh, uh, as regards, for example, transparency of leather, there will be another point. And this is a, you know, let's start with this overview that will be developed with the, with the following uh, uh, sustainability talks in the, in the following days. Okay, so let's go uh, and see the second section of our sustainability report, which is, uh, you know, my, my topic. The economic growth. So leather uh, is a growth because our sector produces value. And here, you know, as as you uh, as you can see, the main sustainability development goals that are involved are the decent work and economic condition, reducing poverty, and also quality of education. Why? Because um, Italian canning industry is composed is an industry that is composed by one. 1,200 companies about and give, providing work for 18,000 employees and producing a, a value of about 5 billion euro every year. These are structural data that can vary among, among the years depending on the market situation, of course. But what is uh, very important is to see that uh, our industry, which is a small industry in terms of numbers, it is international leader in the market. Um, we are responsible of the 65% of production value in Europe, and we are responsible of 23% of production value in the world. And at the same time, we are a top exporter. The 29% of Finnish leather export is Italian. So these are very important numbers to see that our sector can provide wealth to uh, to uh, you know the, the economic to the community to uh, to the community and also uh, due to the fact that uh, Italian tanning industry is a very internationalized industry we export uh, about two thirds of our of our uh, of our turnover and we import about almost 99 percent of uh, of raw material from abroad we also have uh, important relationship also important some private relationship for uh, for example with the uh, um, developing countries so we can say that the tanning industry sustain also the development in uh, developing countries so it is a very important industry one of the first industry that develops uh, in this in this uh, country so um, this is this is this is yeah, a great yeah, yeah. news, uh, Maurizio, to, to hear all, all this, uh, how important is the leather industry actually in the Italian economic uh, system. Uh, yeah. Just uh, one small question about the, uh, so here you indicate 65 and 23% of value, but what about the square feet? Is it uh, the same percentage or is... No, it's not the same past percentage. We are not so strong in terms of value. So um, the production, uh, the Italian production in terms of quantity is about 120 million square meter per year. Uh, also, this is a structural data. If we make a comparison with the big giant, uh, for example, in Asia or in South America, our share is not, uh, is not the one you see for the production value. And this what tells us this is uh, really the, the, um, the, the demonstration that uh, the Italian leather is a high added value product. So, we are an industry that produces small value, small volumes with high high value. 
Okay, no, that's great. As a clarify also now what's what's yeah. what's coming out from from Italy is basically the all the high and the quality is what uh, basically Italy is good is good on. Yeah, exactly. Excuse me, Maurizio. I just want to jump on top one second. We have a lot of questions in our Q and A section, and everybody is asking questions. So I just want to remind to everyone that uh, for housekeeping, at the end of the webinar, we will go over the question and we will try to answer to all of you guys. We are collecting them, and then and then we will go over them. Thank you, guys. Please keep qu asking questions. And. To the next topic, actually, we had a question. We want to go ahead to uh, um, asking more about the the situation right now. We are talking before the call about the COVID. How is the COVID yeah. impact uh, in New York, in Amsterdam, where I am, and uh, and what is the COVID impact actually on on the uh, Italian uh, leather uh, sector uh, and, and the workers of of the Italian leather sector? Well, uh, of course, the impact. Of, of this pandemic, it's uh, under uh, in under it's under the eyes of every one of us. Um, it is a very severe impact in terms of uh, in terms of value of the market. Uh, we estimate for uh, the impact on the uh, the turnover of uh, Italian tanning industry is quite aligned with the impact on the fashion industry. Uh, we estimate about uh, a loss of about 20 to 30 percent of the uh, of the turnover. But um, you know, uh, we hope that uh, uh, the recovery will come soon. Um, this is just an impact on the, on the market, but there is an important uh, uh, aspect emerging in this crisis situation. I know that it can be well. Uh, Every one of us uh, have has, has heard this sentence. So, you know, under every crisis comes an opportunity, and uh, <laughs> and uh, the COVID crisis uh, um, has accelerated the trends towards sustainability. So right now uh, we really want to focus on this topic because this is uh, the way to to go forward uh, to the to to go through the future to to face uh, uh, you know uh, the new normal of uh, after after we come after this uh, after this crisis and the trends uh, uh, the sustainability trends will be really the main drivers of uh, of recovery in the in the future um, this is regard, as regards the market, but I would like my colleague Fabiana to tell you something more about uh, about the workers because you know you have any. I will. I am talking about numbers, the markets, companies, but we don't have to to forget that uh, to to forget that um, after that that the market is composed also by people. So sustainability is really uh, is really a very important aspect for workers. Fabiana. Thank you, Maurizia. Um, <laughs> it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, probably do you know that uh, in Italy um, is still ongoing uh, a layoff freeze, and uh, uh, and so it's not possible at the moment to uh, uh, reduce uh, um, the workforce of uh, of uh, companies. But uh, uh, it is also important to underline that skilled workers in tanneries uh, are a precious resource. And uh, expert workers uh, with the specific competencies uh, are a very crucial uh, resource and a crucial point of uh, competitiveness in a company with a strong artisanal and creative uh, identity uh, like uh, the tannery. So um, the tannery preserve has uh, uh, this commitment to preserve uh, the, uh, their occupation as long uh, as condition, uh, conditions allow. Fabiana, uh, uh, yes. uh, sorry. Uh, there is a, a quite an annoying uh, window in the middle ah, okay. of the presentation. Yes, uh, with a yellow square. Okay. Yes, if you can uh, remove it because it's yeah, it's a uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how I can uh, restart to no, share. I think, okay, I think you can, you know, like grab the the the, the window and no, you know, it, move it. It it, it compares it again. Up. Yeah, yeah. Probably the the solution is interrupt the presentation and to restart. 
I can try. Okay, in the, in the meantime, maybe we can uh, do another question. Yeah, in uh, the meantime, let, let, let's have another question, Nicola. Okay. Yeah. So there Sorry. is a lot of questions. Sorry, let's... Do, you, do you see now the presentation? No, no there is Perfect. no more. Perfect. Okay. You know, I was seeing in the Q&A section that there is a lot of questions regarding 100% uh, renewable, renewable sources. So it will be fun to answer later and get a opinion from the panelists. But let's continue with our presentation and then we will finish at the end. Okay. So, um, this is the reason uh, why uh, the uh, occupational structure of the Italian tenant sector uh, remains generally uh, stable despite uh, the economic uh, situation. Uh, in this the Italian. Good... Please. Sorry. No, this sounds good news. I mean, yeah. uh, at least for now that the government is supporting and we hope that the, the, the business is still going up and the employer are not left out because it, yeah is as you said fabiana it's really important uh, part of sustainability is not only the material and the environment is of course sometimes we forget it's actually the the, the people no? we give uh, for guarantee that but that's actually very important point to to highlight Yes, uh, the layoff is uh, uh, just the last uh, solution uh, of, of a crisis. And uh, um, you can see that uh, in Italian leather sector, over 90% of the employees uh, have a stable employment contract. And uh, to, gu to guarantee the, uh, the stability of uh, working, also industrial relations uh, uh, play a key role. Um, in addition to the uh, collective bargaining uh, uh, agreement of nation, at national level uh, signed by UNICH uh, with uh, trade unions, uh, the 75% of uh, companies have established uh, also uh, further agreements uh, at corporate or local, uh, uh, local level. Female employment uh, is the 22% of total, of course you can see can That's I ask you a quick question? Yes. Can I ask you a quick question, Fabiana? So one main point on sustainability when in the ESG, you know, environment, social, and government issues is the social part. So is yeah. UNICH, uh, mm -hmm. is UNICH part of leading the like all these associates are signing a code of conduct, something like, you know, a code of conduct that every associate has to follow and you know to guarantee like customer and uh, customer and uh, you know consumers yes so we have uh, let me move uh, on the next uh, <laughs> just on the next slide sorry but i think that uh, the uh, square uh, recompares the social, uh, uh, for us, uh, for, for the Italian tanning industry, uh, the social responsibility in the tanning uh, uh, in our sector is uh, um, very important. And uh, we have uh, uh, represented uh, our principles uh, and our commitment uh, in, a, um, in a code of conduct, uh, conduct and uh, uh, social accountability. This code uh, transposes the most important international agreements and standards uh, concerning social responsibility like uh, um, ILO, International Labor, uh, Labor, uh, Labor sorry, Organizations, and also uh, like SA8000. Uh, um, and uh, it transposes uh, this, uh, uh, this principle to the manufacturers uh, of the leather sector. Uh, the, commit the commitment required uh, concerns uh, uh, the respect, of course, of human rights and the work uh, conditions, uh, um, first of all, across uh, the involvement and the uh, development of the community also, and promoting dialogue and collaboration with stakeholders and, and so on. And also it's important in UNICH's uh, uh, code, uh, the role of uh, uh, professional and ethical behavior um, on which uh, companies are called to, uh, to which companies are called to, um, to contribute. 
uh, to guarantee transparencies and uh, also fairness uh, in its uh, uh, relationship. Here you can see the topic uh, of our code, so child labor, uh, forced labor, and, um, um, discrimination, uh, health and safety, very important in the workplace. Uh, uh, this point is very uh, important also for another uh, SDGs, uh, this is the number three that uh, uh, talk about uh, health uh, and uh, well-being because uh, in a workplace uh, it's important to promote uh, health and safety of workers and uh, in uh, since uh, 2003 uh, the commitment of sector uh, is uh, uh, tangible because uh, uh, the reduction of a number of accidents for example is uh, uh, 44 percent of accident uh, less it is, uh, is uh, very important. Another important point is the, uh, the enhancement of human resources because uh, as uh, Maurizio talked uh, before, uh, um, it's important uh, um, a partnership, but also it's important to work together, all together, also in a company to reach uh, uh, goals also of competitiveness, competitiveness and the social responsibility of uh, uh, a production uh, a production activity thank you so much it was very interesting what you just said okay another interesting yes. topic actually that that uh, we always ask lately uh, maybe we can link now or later is about uh, circularity yes uh, because it's really a hot topic. I think if you see all the <laughs> hashtag uh, list, uh, that circularity word is on top of everything. And yeah, of course, C circular economy and what do we do with, uh, with this is, uh, is the hot topic. Everyone wants to talk about that. Yeah. Yes, uh, um, circular economy and circularity um, introduce us uh, in uh, uh, another important, very important pillars, uh, probably the most important or the most claimed pillar of uh, uh, sustainability that is the um, environment that, that concern environmental aspect um, this topic is also the most uh, uh, populated <laughs> topic with uh, uh, with the sdgs and uh, on this topic of, of course uh, circularity uh, plays a very important role uh, circularity is uh, uh, probably with sustainability a very hot topic uh, on uh, at the moment uh, a, a short introduction of what circularity is uh, for our uh, uh, for our public uh, very short uh, circularity we can consider circularity as a as a sort of new paradigm for the economic growth and business um, and uh, is uh, absolutely an increasing uh, trend of, uh, uh, of sustainability and uh, it is also a, uh, a target goal of uh, um, several uh, uh, poly, um, policies uh, in new, mainly in Europe but uh, not only. It, uh, uh, its uh, aim is to uh, maintain uh, as long as possible materials in the productive and using circle, avoiding or at least uh, limiting. At the same time, uh, the use of non-renewable uh, uh, raw materials and the waste uh, production. Based on that, uh, the tiny industry uh, can consider itself uh, as a precursor of circular economy because uh, uh, as we said before uh, um, it uses a scrap as a raw material so as main raw material and values it uh, on uh, residues uh, uh, through cutting age technology that uh, involve the entire supply chain for example um, just uh, just an example uh, the exhaustive bath of uh, uh, chromium salts uh, from, uh, um, from the bat uh, um, can be uh, treated and salts uh, returns uh, after uh, concentration uh, to the tanneries for, the, uh, for their use. 
the topic is very hot, uh, but uh, on this uh, on this issue, um, we we invite uh, all of you to join the third uh, uh, talk that uh, uh, that is planned for the 9th of uh, the February. Uh, that will come uh, uh, into deep to the uh, circular model of uh, Italian uh, tanning industry and uh, we uh, in, uh, in this uh, occasion we can um, extract and come into detail uh, to each step of uh, tanning production and uh, uh, analyzing uh, um, what are the uh, point of circularity of our business model. Yes, I think Fabiana, that's actually, that will be also very interesting webinar, uh, uh, all yeah. one webinar about circularity. And also I want to pick up uh, with uh, our special guest, uh, Fabio, for, for a question about circularity because it is the hot topic. And uh, in our business, uh, we see sometimes circularity has also different meaning and difficulties when we talk about finished product, for example. How is it the approach from the uh, university point of view, from the study point of view, circularity? What does that mean? Well, first of all, what we, what we are trying to do also to persuade the policymakers that are dealing with circularity, especially the European Commission is doing a lot, but also other governments is to persuade them that circularity has uh, nothing to do with just waste. It's not just uh, something, a policy or a strategy that has to do, that has to deal with the excessive production of waste. What, waste is one part of the story. It's very important to prevent waste. So to produce the, the lower quantity of waste possible, it's very important to find ways to, to, ways to recover waste so, uh, for example, the, the lettering, the things that Fabiana was uh, talking about uh, uh, regarding the experience of the Italian uh, tanneries on, on recovering different uh, waste that they have at their factories is very uh, much consistent with the idea of the circular economy. Probably uh, the sector, for example, can, uh, has a lot of uh, uh, room to, to improve in, for example, thinking about how the final product can be recovered at the end of its life. No, that, that's, that's one challenge for the future of the, of the sector. But, but what is true is that your product, you know, they never get old, they never die because one purse made in leather has like five or six lives mm -hmm. because no, they, they are fashionable also after many, many years. Or you have the, the used product market, the second hand. Uh, product market, which is a way to carry out circularity. So circularity is again a very, uh, you remember the metaphor I did about the yeah. kaleidoscope of color? Each color has many different shades. So even if you take the color of circularity, you can make circularity in se several different ways. For example, the reparability of a product is circularity because you, you know, you endure the life, you, you, you make a life of a product longer by making it easily repairable. So for, for a jacket or for a purse or for a wallet, it could be something that uh, can be taken in, into consideration. And even if you think about uh, the, the, the whole uh, circle of the economy, the circle works if you recover waste, but also if you consume uh, a, a lower quantity of, of raw materials. So Another thing could be, how can I optimize the use of the leather in order to make interesting products with a lower quantity, with a lower weight of, of, of my inputs in terms of raw material? There are several different ways of interpreting circular economy. And I think that you are very strong, the, the, the sector, uh, the leather sector is very, very strong in some of these interpretation, in some of these keys to make a circular economy operational. In others, you might have a, a good margins for, for further improvement. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, overall, the sector has, uh, if, if you could measure the level of circularity through some indicators, maybe we can discuss this later, 
I think that uh, the sector would come up with, with a very good positioning with respect to some other sectors that are lagging behind. Thank yeah, you. That, yeah, thank you, thank you, Fabio. And that was uh, actually, we also recognize this in our talks uh, often, it depends a lot on design, design yeah. with the uh, uh, end of life in mind. Uh, out yeah, the, the, the design, uh, you know, the way that the company design a product is the first step of circular economy, right, Fabio? We have to make yes. sure that we have to make sure that something is repairable in uh, to in today's world that nothing is repairable. The way we, you know, a printer, a television, they used to be repairable, and now nothing has been repairable in a purse, on a jacket, or in a fashion product. We need design company, the fashion company, to design into something that can be repaired. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Design is the key for everything. Uh, just, just think of the fact that European Commission, for example, now, and I think uh, other governments will follow, is is thinking about the legislation to protect consumers and um, establishing a right to have the product repaired. You know? It's not just the guarantees; it's the fact that the producer. Uh, should be able to provide the consumer with additional services, you know, uh, after the, 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 the selling of the product to make the product repairable in some way. So uh, in the future, you might see something like this. And it all depends on design, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Also because uh, um, it's, uh, it's very important to approach uh, uh, circularity uh, starting by the reduction of the uh, consumption of uh, resources. This is the reason why uh, one of the most important pillars of uh, uh, circular economy is uh, uh, the use of resources. Here you can see uh, some KPIs uh, uh, some indicators. The tanning process transforms raw hides and skins uh, into leather, of course, using resources uh, that are mainly water, chemical products, uh, and uh, energy. This consumption is, uh, you can see on the right, uh, uh, this consumption is different for different phases of, uh, uh, of uh, the tanning process. The First, the wet uh, processes uh, um, are more relevant for uh, water and chemical consumption. Instead, uh, the post tanning and, finish, uh, and finishing uh, are uh, more uh, relevant for the energy consumption because uh, drying operation that absorb uh, um, a lot of uh, um, a lot of energy. We can. Uh, close uh, the, uh, the picture of uh, environmental impacts uh, also with the uh, emissions. Of course, we have uh, for the production of leather, consumption of resources and also emissions uh, into environment. The main emissions are uh, waste uh, and uh, scraps that uh, uh, are for the most part uh, uh, peculiar to the process and uh, but of which uh, 71 uh, 70, uh, 75% uh, of uh, of that uh, are uh, recovered also tanning uh, with water is uh, um, characterized uh, uh, by a significant content of pollutant load uh, so it's important uh, uh, confer confer it to appropriate treatment and uh, also in a uh, ecosystem uh, logic and approach uh, all, also um, symbiotic approach is important the collaboration with the, all the supply chain and also with the, um, the entire systems for example uh, with the, the uh, central treatment plants uh, that you can see um, have reached a very high uh, level of uh, uh, efficiency. In order to um, have emissions, the most important indicator is the solvent consumption. Uh, this, this KPI has uh, uh, reached a, a very high reduction uh, during the years uh, uh, due to the uh, a 
change of processes, for example. And uh, in order to, uh, to give an indicator um, related to the climate change, uh, we have considered the uh, production of CO2 equivalent that is uh, uh, related with the consumption of uh, uh, fossil of, uh, of energy like uh, for all um, energy source like fossil fuels and uh, uh, electricity. It's important uh, to... Um, Sorry, uh, for yeah. Diana, before to go ahead, I think KPIs is also a very important uh, part uh, uh, where I actually want to pick up again the, the brain of, of uh, our special guest of Fabio uh, to understand which is the role of, of the KPIs on the, on the uh, reporting of uh, sustainability. How much is it important to have KPIs to, to report uh, this data? Uh, well, you see, Nicola, the, the, the KPIs are actually uh, the, 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 the basis of sustainability. Like, uh, I, I used to say that, well, you know, a few years ago, and not going to back in time, like at the beginning of the year 2000, uh, there were no, not so many companies that were dealing with sustainability in, in, in the way they do today. So the you know, competition between companies and between industries and sectors was amongst, you know, on, on one side, there were companies that were talking about sustainability environment and the things they did. And on the other side, uh, companies that didn't say anything, okay? So, you know, in the, in the uh, uh, you know, uh, in the image that the, 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 the stakeholders had, you know, good guys, bad guys. But now, uh, Everyone is talking about sustainability. So the thing is that the competition is not anymore between you know, uh, uh, companies that they say they do something and company they don't. Industry that they say they do something for the environment and so on, and industry that they just forget about the, the thing, they, they neglect, they don't wanna talk about that. Everyone is talking. So the thing is that if you want to understand, and you, if you want to prove uh, what you're doing, you have to show what you do, you have to measure what you do. You have to be able to demonstrate. And the only way in which you can do that is by measuring your contribution to sustainability and uh, 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 communicating the data, uh, showing your indicators, you know, being transparent uh, uh, with respect to anyone who has the uh, willingness and the ability to understand sustainability and wants to know more. And this is what is happening also on the market. You know, once upon a time, only environmental NGOs, consumer NGOs, they were, you know, very well equipped. They know what they were talking about and they made a lot of requests and complaints and so on. So you used maybe data indicators just to reply to those guys because they were, you know, pretty much aware of what they were talking about. But now, on the market, you have a lot of consumer, uh, consumers that they are uh, aware and they want to know more. So, you know, saying I'm green or just talking in general about sustainable, how sustainable you are, it's, it's simply not enough anymore. You have to provide data and you have to be credible in the data you provide. So it's not just, I'm telling you this, but I can provide reliable numbers on what are my performances. I can show you how the performance evolves over time. So I can tell you that I am improving over time. So that's why a sustainability report is so important. It's important for an industry. It's important for a company. There are many other ways in which you can communicate and, and, and talk with your stakeholders, with the consumers, with the market about how your product uh, is sustainable or green and so on. But the important is that you make it through science-based indicators and numbers. Otherwise, you are not uh, reliable. And, and you're not just uh, not more reliable to me, you know, for, 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 for a technical guy or, or for a scientist or whatever. It's just, you, you're not reliable for the consumer anymore right? or for, for the, the layman no? uh, because they have evolved their capability to understand and the level of trust that they have in companies 
is directly proportional to how much the company is transparent. So how much information the company provides about sustainability. And this is proved by many, many studies. Thank you very much, uh, Fabio. This is really a great point, actually, that we see daily also on our uh, business, uh, on our job. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, greenwash. There may be a lot of greenwash with good marketing campaign, but when you go really to see the data, the KPIs, it's not always the right uh, sustainable data. So we uh, also in our talk, uh, we talk about uh, this uh, greenwash and the importance of uh, developing the data culture uh, and, and KPIs culture in the going forward, let's say. Starting from the, uh, the reply of, uh, of Fabio, I, I want to underline that the scientific approach is very important to support environmental claims. Uh, especially if they are related uh, to comparison with different uh, materials. Uh, it can happen, for example, that uh, uh, one material is, uh, um, is claimed as better to another, but without uh, uh, data, without indicators, without uh, um, analyze uh, with, the, with, with the which approach uh, uh, this uh, uh, disclaimer is, uh, is, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, made. And so it's important to, um, to have a, um, an, an established and scientific-based uh, approach like uh, LCA approach that is currently the most complete methodology to assess the potential impact of a product along all its life cycle, according to the rules of calculation that are the PCR. That, for example, for the leather, for leather um, were established at a European level. So if you want to calculate the impact of LCA of leather, you have to use the PCR that are established at uh, um, government, uh, government uh, uh, level. And this is uh, uh, important because uh, frequently we can see uh, communication or claims that uh, attribute uh, um, to leather all the upstream uh, impact of farming, for example. In this, uh, uh, in this slide, uh, we uh, want to show what uh, the uh, reality is very different. For example, the farming uh, in, in the PFCR and in the cow modeling that the uh, European Commission developed uh, to, uh, to, to sustain uh, um, the PFCR of, uh, of leather, um, European Commission established that uh, the impact uh, and the allocation of the farming impacts to the uh, to the animal uh, uh, to slaughter is only the 12 percent 12 percent the 88 uh, percent is allocated to dairy product dairy products and also um, the slaughterhouses uh, uh, impact of this impact only the 3.5 percent is allocated to the height, uh, heights and, and uh, skins uh, produced. So the results uh, of these two, uh, these numbers combined is that to raw heights, the allocation, the correct allocation impact of uh, uh, upstream farming and, and so on is only the 0.425%. This is a very important point uh, uh, to establish also a, um, how can I say, a, a good comparison also with the other uh, materials. Last, uh, uh, there are uh, other two important uh, um, aspects of uh, uh, sustainability that we can consider transversal to um to all the topic and uh, uh, these are uh, the 
technological and innovation and scientific research that of course are essential to guarantee um, economic competitiveness and to promote sustainable at, uh, uh, of processes at all levels. And uh, as uh, also Maurizio said before, uh, the importance of uh, synergies. And so the uh, collaboration across the supply chain, but also with uh, um, all uh, stakeholders. This is absolutely uh, relevant for all, uh, um, for, all the, for all topics, but for ethical issues uh, in particular. Uh, Maurizia, what can you tell about it? Maurizia, your microphone is over. I'm sorry. Okay, don't worry. Oh, well, I can tell you that, uh, well, the sustainable management of, uh, of raw material has to do with uh, a high level of, uh, of control over the, uh, the supply chain, uh, over the upstream supply chain, um, let's say. That is why, for us, the um, traceability issue is a, a really a priority because this is the way to, uh, to guarantee, to, to provide guarantees uh, to the market uh, uh, as regards the ethical issues related with Zelder that uh, every customer uh, currently is asking for. I am talking about specifically um, animal welfare. Uh, I am talking about uh, the guarantees of, uh, of uh, raw material coming from areas that are not involved in deforestation, for example. So these are the, 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 ethical, uh, the ethical, the most re relevant ethical issues uh, for, uh, for our industry. And uh, the, it is very important uh, to find a way to, to provide this guarantee. And uh, um, it is also important to find the right way to communicate to the public uh, how we, uh, we, we respect uh, uh, these aspects. And, and Maurizio, correct. correct. Maritza, correct me if I'm wrong. We will have another uh, webinar regarding animal welfare and traceability, correct? Yes, of course we because will. Because I'm, I'm sure the people has a lot of questions regarding this uh, uh, topic that is very sensitive to the public and even yeah. for us. Yeah, this is a very hot topic. So that is why we have decided to, to dedicate an entire uh, sustainability talk over, over these uh, this issues that really... Uh, can be can, can open another discussion of two hours <laughs> or, or more so this is a really um this is really one of uh, one of the challenges for the future and uh, uh fabiana i would like to conclude with uh, with other some other challenges uh, nicolò you have anticipated me um as we have, uh, uh, as I said, uh, this was an overview of the relevant topics for sustainability. Um, these challenges will be, uh, will be the subject for the next, uh, our next sustainability talks. Uh, I am talking about the ethical issues, as, uh, as you said, but also about, uh, for example, transparency, the circular economy, um, the, uh, the, the safety of the products, uh, and the way to provide guarantees, for example, through uh, certification schemes. So that is why uh, these challenges will really be um, the driver for the future of, uh, of uh, the tanning industry. And they will, be, they will uh, have an important, important role for, uh, for reaching the sustainability goals that we have uh, set for, uh, for, for our industry. So Great. That was a great, great uh, overview. Uh, thanks a lot uh, so far, Fabiana, Maurizia, and, and Fabio. But we still is not finished yet. Uh, we still have a, a couple of. Actually, I have one, only one question on the role of UNICH with with education with the new generation. Good. Also, we had also Fabio here, but actually the question was more to Maurizia. I wanted to understand what is UNICH doing for the future uh, generation to um, have the people really love leather. I, I grow in leather, I love leather, but yeah. how can we guarantee that this is, uh, let's say, support this part? 
Well, uh, Nicolo, as an industry association, we uh, we support our our companies in uh, in uh, in every in every field of their activity, but we also support uh, uh, support the market in general. So, uh, one of our main tasks is to uh, to spread information to the public, to the market, to the students. Um, one of our uh, most important activities in, uh, in these years have been uh, all the initiatives in terms of training of the young generation. So we, uh, we make uh, lots of classes, lessons, sustainability talks with students of all the, of all the schools, uh, starting from the uh, primary schools, of course, uh, the target uh, uh, defines the, the type of action that we implement, but we, we, we go to the teenager schools, we go to the designer schools, so we, we try to provide the information, the relevant information to the public because we have, uh, we understand that our sector, even if it is a traditional sector, is not, uh, uh, sometimes is not understood, sometimes is not uh, well known, so we, we need to communicate very well our identity and the identity of our material uh, in order to, you know, let's say, uh, try to, to create the basis for a future development. It was, was very nice to hear your, your answer, Maurizia. There are a lot of questions in, your, in our yeah. Q&A ah. sector. I was trying and... to answer, but, but I, I, I couldn't because there were too much. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know there are some some very good one. We will reply to everyone uh, on a on a separate side. We have the email of everyone, so you guys you will get our time is rolling up. It's more than one hour. We are in this webinar, so we will answer to everyone uh, privately. And uh, thank you everyone to be in here, right, Maurizia? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Nico. Thank you for all the panel. Yes, go ahead. Sorry to, to cut one second because actually on the last topic, I, I, it's a shame that we don't ask our special guest, Iraldo, on the education. Yes, actually, for the, the sure. Role sorry, of, sorry. The role of yes. UNICH uh, doing this uh, education with the school. Uh, you mentioned, Maurizia, all the different levels, even primary school. Actually, my kids are playing with leather often at home. And, and, uh, but Fabio, what, what do you think is missing? What do you think actually was missing the last few years to uh, uh, translate this passion also to the young generation? No, you know, I, I think that the, the young generation, they already love leather. I mean, when I, I talk about, I, I, I pose a lot of case studies in my lessons to, to my students about the sustainability of different products. And you know they they love leather. You know the, the only product that they they like more than leather is beer. But the, well, that's quite reasonable. <laughs> but they love when when I talk about sustainability of leather. I think that, that I mean it's like when you are in love with a beautiful girl. Now you're in love with that girl, but you know there are a lot of people that talks bad. You now that, that spreads a lot of gossip about that girl, and and most of this gossip might be fake news. You no, know, might might be not true. So if you want young generation to fall in love, to still be in love with leather, uh, when, they, when they choose their, the, the way they dress, I think they have, you have to fight fake news with science. So the yeah. only thing you can do is, is you know, uh, uh, rebut all the, the, the fake news that uh, someone is, is spreading about uh, sustainability of leather. With, with science, with the, with the data, with, by, by measuring, you know, it's just like you know, UNICH is doing. So. You know, Fabio, me and Nicolo, we started sustainability talks with NNN for, for, for a game and for, uh, let's say, education. You know, we work in this industry since forever and we face a lot of uh, problems because people, you know, our colleagues, the people that work, designers and everyone has hunger of sustainability knows about product knows about materials and knows about the things where the things come from so i think it's very important as you say fighting data with uh, science with sci with scientific numbers but also giving to the people the right direction and with no uh, integralist approach 
Thank you, everyone. Good. Thank you. If there's not anything to add, maybe we just introduce the next uh, uh, the next uh, webinar that will be the twenty uh, sixth of January. Yeah. Uh, called the leather, a unique material. It is about the terminology and the transparency at, for consumers. The terminology of the word leather that has been uh, protected the last few months as a protected awards. And we will have uh, with us uh, again uh, Maurizia uh, Conto, yes, and also <laughs> Alessandra Siena from Unich, and also Gustavo Gonzalez uh, Cujano from the uh, European uh, Commission from Cotace, so the European Leather uh, Commission that will uh, drive us through this uh, topic. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Thank See you. you next week. Ciao, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.